Forces are the thing that bind elementary particles together to make larger composite particles. Forces are also the thing that allows us to distinguish the elementary particles from one another. After all, the reason we know the difference between a quark and a lepton is because that they possess different properties that allow the quarks to feel the strong force and the leptons to not feel the strong force. In much the same way, all the elementary particles can be distinguished from one another by application of a force. The forces are also the reason why we never see some of the elementary particles in commonly in nature today. Things like muons or taus or top quarks have decayed away in the universe's 14 billion year history because of forces. In addition, there are only certain kinds of composite structures that we see, and those composite structures follow a pattern that are allowed by the forces. For example, three quarks are allowed to stick together, but never four or eight. It's only combinations of three or two, one quark plus one antiquark. So the forces dictate the patterns that are observed in nature. What are the forces? Well, there are four thought to be in nature today. There's the gravitational force, the electromagnetic force, the strong force, and the weak force. Gravity is obviously very familiar. It's the thing that pulls us down to Earth. It's the thing that causes tides and high tides and low tides from the moon. Uh, we're very familiar with our everyday experience of gravity. Electromagnetic forces are also pretty familiar to us. They, they power our iPhones and they govern lots of things in nature like lightning. The strong force should also be relatively familiar to us because it's the thing that is responsible for generating nuclear power. It's the thing that binds nuclei together, and it's the thing that can be harnessed in the form of atomic bombs. The weak force might be a little less familiar, but it's actually the thing that powers the sun, and most of the reactions that are taking place in the sun are weak force reactions. And the energy release is the thing that gives us the light and heat that we benefit from. What's a force characterized by? Well, there are several things that you should know about a force. First of all, it has a, th a thing called a charge, which is a property carried by all the particles in nature that allow them to feel that force. We're familiar with one. It's electric charge. And if a particle has electric charge, then they can feel the electromagnetic force or the magnetic force. It also has a range. In other words, how it, there's a, a distance that characterizes characterizes how far particles have to be apart or close together uh, before they, these two neighbors can feel the force between them. Some forces, like electromagnetism, has a somewhat infinite range, although we know that the force gets weaker as you go further out. Not all forces have the same range. And the last part of, uh, property you should know about is something called the carrier particle. The carrier particle is a messenger that transmits the force between two matter particles. Let's talk about charges. This is the property carried by matter particles that allow them to feel different forces. For gravity, that, that charge is called mass, and we know it well. The larger the mass of an object, the larger the gravitational force attracting that object to its neighbor. For electromagnetism, that thing is called electric charge. And so we have to distinguish whenever we say charge in general versus electric charge, specifically referring to the E and M force. So we know about positive charges and negative charges and zero charges and there are even fractional charges. For the strong force, the strong force doesn't care about the other charges like electricity, the electric charge or the mass charge. It cares about something of, called, else called color. There's, it's not to say that char, uh, objects really have a color to them, but just like in the electromagnetic force, a positive and a negative, when added together, create an electrically neutral thing that no longer feels the electromagnetic force. In the case of the strong force, if you added three particles together, one which had a charge called the red one, and one that's called the blue one, and one that's called the green one, these three things would co combine together to make an overall neutral particle that would no longer feel the strong force. In the case of the weak force, there's something else which I'll call generation number, and it, it refers to which of the two columns, or which of the three columns in the tables of fundamental particles does a particle sit. The ranges of the forces differ incredibly. Gravity and electromagnetism have an infinite range. The strong force is effectively neutralized within the a range of the nucleus. You cannot feel things outside that distance. And the weak force is so feeble 
because its range is much less than even a proton size. Those are somewhat drastically different orders of magnitude.